Hey everyone, it's Jeremy Osterberger with BIC Magazine. Today I'm joined by Jim Wright of the Railroad Commission of Texas. Jim was elected as commissioner in November. Today we will talk about winter storm URI and potential solutions for the state of Texas power and natural gas supply as it relates to the industrial manufacturing facilities in the state. We'll also get Jim's views on priorities of the Railroad Commission over the next few years and what impact the federal government may have on achieving the state's goals. Hey, Jim, welcome, and we appreciate you sharing some time with us today. Well, thank you guys for having me today. It's a pleasure. So, uh, Jim, the Railroad Commission's name is somewhat of a misnomer. Uh, there is no jurisdiction or authority over railroads in Texas. So tell the viewers uh, real quickly about the commission and uh, so they can understand a little bit about the responsibilities. Well, you know, that's, that's part of the things we're hoping to accomplish and we can get into that later but but you're right you know as i traveled across texas the uh the railroad commission name was uh really misleading a lot of people didn't even know what we did in the state of texas which i think uh i think really shows that that we need to we need to put an educational campaign on so that people know what it is we do and how important that is for our economy here in the state but to answer your question the railroad commission has primary regulatory authority over the oil and natural gas industry, pipeline transportation, natural gas and hazardous liquid uh, pipeline industry, natural gas utilities, the LP gas industry, and the coal and uranium surface mining operations. You know, the Railroad Commission considers uh, protection of the environment and preservation of individual property rights to be two of its primary uh, responsibilities and, and through its employees has a long and proud history of service to both Texas and to the nation. So, uh, Jim, thanks for that uh, quick overview. Uh, let's get into Winter Storm URI. So, obviously, mid February, uh, URI came through, wreaked tons of havoc on the state's power grid. Obviously, there was a resulting loss of power to you know millions of Texans, Governor. Abbott issued a disaster declaration for uh, all of Texas counties in response to the severe weather conditions. In addition, in, in addition the uh, Texas Railroad Commission issued an emergency order to prioritize you know, natural gas distribution to residential customers and, and human needs. However, large industrial users were pushed to lower on the priority list. You know, Governor Abbott demanded that all industrial sites seize manufacturing uh, to reduce power consumption to the lowest possible levels. Uh, shutdown operations for many sites, um, you know, did happen whenever possible, um, unless, of course, the industrial site is transporting gas or exporting power. So, you know, as it relates to the industrial manufacturing sites and uh, curtailment of natural gas supply, you know, what did we learn, you know, and what can we do in the future to improve that situation, if at all possible? Well, you know, the uh, Governor Abbott's intention with that, uh, just to kind of set the record straight, was to make sure that we had enough heat available for our homes and to make sure that uh, we did everything we could to keep the lights on. So as the commission, uh, you may not be aware, but uh, February 12th is when we issued a notice to operators uh, by emergency order. And when I say operators, natural gas producers, that essentially stated the transportation, delivery, and or sale of natural gas in the state of Texas for any other purpose other than uh, serving human needs, customers should be curtailed to the extent possible and necessary for the um, duration of, of, of our emergency order, which, which ended actually yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, the lesson I, I think that, you know, we've, we've kind of learned in, in the way this thing uh, progressed. I, I can tell you, we here at the uh, commission, uh, I, I believe handled this situation the best way we could within our authoritative rights. Uh, I believe the lesson moving forward is folks needs, needs to realize that we have rules regarding how power is supplied onto uh, the electrical grid system, which uh, the commission does not oversee or administer. Uh, PUC and ERCOT has that authority. You know, simply said, the, uh, the real issues that we experienced last week uh, was not the failure of the oil and gas industry, but uh, you know, it, it, it's a it, it's complicated. We have a, we have a system that that is generated by by different sources, renewable energy sources such as wind and 
and, and solar. And we have uh, natural gas that supplies our, our demand for our electrical uh, generation. And we also have coal. Um, and the way that we have it set up and priority by mandate is we have to allow those renewable energy sources, uh, wind and solar, uh, at least 20% uh, of manufacturing the, the electrical requirements for the state of Texas. Now, whether that comes, you know, at the same time natural gas does, that's, that's rarely the occurrence because the wind doesn't always blow and the sun doesn't always shine. So what happens to people that, that use natural gas or coal, as, as, you, as you may know, are the very reliable sources in generation of electricity. The, uh, the, they, have to, they have to bring those down to, to meet that quota of that 20% in the renewable energy sources. So, so you, know, you may have months that that happens quite a bit again, because the wind's not blowing or the sun's not, not shining. So it's not something that, that people that are in the, in the uh, business of generating electricity can rely on, on, you know, how much electricity am I going to sell today and how much electricity am I going to sell tomorrow? So as you know, an investor that would, that would have uh, interest in putting in a reliable source using coal or natural gas uh, would be discouraged because you can't really per perform them what that success would be and, and, and the capital required to do that. So when I think, when you look at kind of what happened to us last week, that's, that's one of the reasons that that occurred. The second reason is, you know, years ago in the 90s, we, we, we as the state decided that we needed to deregulate electricity as, as before it was regulated. We did that because we thought it would be good for consumer pricing, and it has been. You know, the state of Texas has got some of the lowest electrical rates in, in the nation. Right. Um, what it what it did though is it it it's allowed our our actual infrastructure in the grid itself to not be upgraded. So as population and industry has increased here in Texas, the demand for electricity has increased right alongside that. Here's, a, here's kind of a simple example. A lot of people may or may not know, but if you've got an appliance that requires 50 amps and you're sending it down a very small wire, you're probably not going to get the amperage supply that that piece of equipment needs at 50 amps. You're going to have to send it down a pretty heavy wire so that you get ample electricity transferred correctly to meet the need and the requirement for whatever it is you're supplying. So it's no different than our grid system today. If we're not upgrading as population increases and industry increases here in Texas, and you, you put a huge demand on that grid, you're gonna have things occur that's occurred to us last week. So you know, I'm, not, I'm not faulting any, any source of who actually generates that electricity. I just think there's a lot of, a lot of issues that, that we need to address. And I, and I think that legislature is moving full speed ahead on that this week, as a matter of fact to try to identify exactly what those failures were and what we can do to keep it from occurring again. You know, uh, there's some hearings this week at the state level. And, and I guess my other question is just what else can, what else can industry do? Right. And like you mentioned, you know, the uh, capacity versus the demand and all the tens of billions of dollars that expansions have happened in the, you know, primarily the chemical industry, right. Refining business over the last five to seven years, especially in the ship channel area, you know, is that, is that going to be one of the questions as well? Hey, how can we work together on this? And what would be your expectations from uh, industry itself? Well, again, I think we need to lean on legislature a little bit to, to get to the bottom of, of exactly what occurred. And I think the answer to that is going to be that we need to look at, you know, how, how we have allowed renewable that access onto the grid and maybe not, not allow that to happen. That if you're generating electricity, you should have a customer base that's that you supply day in and day out, so that you can perform those capital costs to, to set up a system like that. Gotcha. And you know, I think ERCOT needs to be more cognizant in, in whatever comes out of this uh, from the hearings this week, to where they they are putting attention on upgrading our aged grid system, and they also need to put attention on you know how do how do we encourage reliable energy used in our electrical generation if we're going to stop this you know the the, the bottom line 
I think for, for everyone in Texas to realize is that all of those options are probably going to equate to higher consumer cost for us when it comes to electricity. But or or we have to, you know, decide are we going to endure times like 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 we did last week? Uh, and, and as as population continues to grow and industry continues to grow here in Texas, you'll probably see some of the same stuff occurring in the in the you know the hot uh, summer times as electric electrical uh, air conditioners get flipped on and that requirement. You know, again, you can't send uh, you can't ask for 50 amps down a very small wire and, and expect those things to perform. So somewhere that cost is going to have to have to happen. Uh, for us to stop this from occurring. So you ask what industry can do. I think we need to get out and, and advocate or you know, advocate for our legislatures to really take a hard, strong look at how we've structured who gets priority in our grid system. And how do we encourage that we, we get a, an aging grid system upgraded? And how do we encourage people to come in and generate more electricity, which would be good for our industry because I think natural gas is the most reliable, abundant source that we have today for that generation. Thanks, Jim. Really appreciate the insight. So, Jim, let's get into some priorities for the commission. You know, what are some priorities for Texas oil and gas industry in the next year or two? And, and tell us how those priorities, you know, may be affected by the Biden administration at the federal level. You know, um, there's several right now that we're working on here in the next next uh, year or two, and everybody knows, and you've seen it in the media, uh, our gas flaring issues that we're having. Um, you know, that 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 also is very complicated because if you sit back and you say, okay, we're we're not going to allow industry to flare off natural gas anymore, what that really means is that we're going to cut production of crude, and when we cut the production of that crude we're gonna become more reliant on foreign sources. And that's been kind of the, the, the problem we've experienced in Texas. As we know, oil and gas is, is one of the biggest economic drivers we have here. So when you get outside competition coming in and wrecking the market prices like you saw earlier this year, people lose their jobs. Uh, landowners lose their, their loyalty. You know, there's a lot of things that suffer in our economy when that occurs. So, so to say that we, we would just shut off flaring would be inviting that to occur more often. Uh, you know, I, I think it's important though that we, we start to look at how do we utilize more of that natural gas? And it's just what I said before. I, I think it's important for people to know why this occurred last week. And if we can get it encouraged for more natural gas fired electrical generation plants to be built, we utilize more of that gas and it turns into economics that are better for Texas. And it's the same way on our exportation of our natural gas. I think we need to take a really hard look at that end of the pipe to resolve our flaring issues. And, and you asked what, what we're looking at, that's what it is today. And, and it's, a, it's a complicated balance, but, but if we work on that, especially here in my office, every day. That's, that's, that's issues that we're, we're moving dramatically toward trying to resolve. And, and Jim, at the federal level, uh, new administration's in, we're obviously starting to see the direction that the administration's headed as it relates to energy. Does uh, any actions by the Biden administration uh, affect some of these priorities in the state of Texas? No, it, it remains to be seen what the federal authorities will be changing in, in regards to, to emissions that we just talked about. Especially on the flaring side, that that will have a big effect, and I, I think I think we're going to see some of that as as he reappoints people to our environmental protection agency. We're probably going to get more stringent uh, air emission controls. I don't know what what that true impact is going to be yet because I haven't seen anything promulgated. Right. Uh, you know, President Biden has already done some some executive orders, which essentially has hurt the oil and gas industry. Uh, you know, with his federal mandates uh, in regards to uh, uh, killing the Keystone Project and and not being able to drill on federal federal lands, you know, I, I don't think people really realize the impact that has on Texas. You know, although we don't have federal lands to speak of here that he can really impact, there's lots of that in New Mexico. 
and a lot of the the workers that go to New Mexico live in Texas. That's right. Yeah. So so we're, we you know he, he's he's got a huge impact on our employment by making that rule. And then a lot of people don't realize what he did when he when he crushed the Keystone uh, pipeline project. Sure. You know what what at the end of the day what that really means to everybody it's going to be a higher price of gasoline and diesel to the consumer. You know and it. it <laughs> You know, he says that that he did that in the name of protecting our environment. Well, Canadian oil is going to continue to come to us, irregardless if that pipeline was put in or not. It comes to us today by rail, truck, and ship. Mm-hmm. So, if you wanted to know which one would have a potential impact on our environment, I would I would choose rail, truck, and ship way before I would choose a pipeline. You know, what what he essentially did is he's he's keeping up the price because of logistics. Of getting that oil to us, so we can use that heavier crude, and the and the crude that's required to make those products in the way our refineries are tooled today. So, you know, I, I when I talked about education earlier, I think those are the things that that the commission needs to have some channel to get those things out that are facts, and so that people recognize, you know, what what these these uh, things that 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 the feds and the Biden administration are doing are truly having an impact to us here in Texas. Hey, Jim, we really appreciate your time today. I know you have a lot going on in uh, response to Winter Storm Uri yeah. and just uh, handling the day-to-day. Uh, we really thank you for coming on with us today. Uh, thank you guys for having me. And any time, um, you know, i will be happy to, to get on and again. I think educating people on what the real issues are and what we do and how important things things are from our industry side, I, I'm, I'm all about it. Thank you so much. And if you want to learn more about the Railroad Commission of Texas, you can visit uh, www.rcc.state.tx.us. And as always, we're most grateful for our audience. Please like and share this recording with colleagues. And for more industry videos and podcasts, visit BicMagazine.com. Remember, everybody, it's what we do together that counts.